Today I'm ridiculously excited to share with you a little project I made using this Art Graph Carbon thingamajiggy. It's this cool rectangle. It's about, it's about two inches by one and a half inch. And it's actually a carbon, solid carbon, and it's completely water soluble. Now there are some really cool water soluble items that you can use for making art. That one is actually a putty. And what's, um, and you can also buy uh, water soluble graphites in just regular pencil form as well, just in case you were not aware. So there's quite a few little items like this that are super fun to use for arting. But this one I picked up at Jerry's Artorama. I couldn't remember how much I spent on this, but I, so I just did a quick search on Amazon. It's about $12 um, for a single one, but it also comes in a variety of other shapes and sizes and also colors, just in case you are curious. Um, and these are extremely water soluble. So how I decided to experiment with this was by doing an arch journal spread. Um, and so what I did is I transferred a drawing into my Strathmore watercolor journal and I just uh, traced over my drawn lines or my transferred lines this was a drawing i had done previously and i'm just using the corner of it to just trace again my lines um and then i'm going to introduce water now i've never used anything like this before i have to say because the shape of the i guess disc although disc really insinuates this would be around, but whatever. <laughs> you, it, it drew pretty well because of the pointed edge, regardless, which is exactly what the shape is created for, right? You're drawing onto garments with that sharp edge, but I had no idea how powerful or water soluble this was going to be, to be honest. Um, I should also mention, you can actually just take a wet brush that's water and uh, sweep it over the carbon disc and then just do like a wash that way so you never even have to use this specifically for drawing but I had a blast doing it and I am always happy to be the guinea pig in these art situations <laughs> um, yeah I'm not scared I think because I'm so familiar with the Stabilo all pencil and how black and water soluble that is um, I wasn't really afraid to go to go into this so if this is your first time trying I would just say go slowly so um, right off the bat I was stunned really by how water soluble this is but not only was i stunned i felt like i was in very familiar territory because this looked and behaved exactly like my beloved stabilo all pencil and if you're not sure what i'm talking about when i say stabilo all um, check the video I'll, I'll in the corner of the screen right now, I'll, I'll flash a little card. You can click on that to see um, how I use my favorite Stabilo All pencil, but this is almost exactly the same. And I'm wondering if the ink inside Stabilo All isn't carbon, isn't carbon. Cause look how black it, it looks actually identical to the ink that's found within the Stabilo All pencil. So the rest of this whole drawing is just me activating the dry lines I created with this super cool uh, carbon rectangle chunk. It's quite magical. Um, and the way that I like to do hair quite frequently with a lot of water soluble materials is that I keep a highlight in the center because it makes it look like there's like a little bit of a sheen there and sort of, um, that highlight strip in the middle. So all I do to create that is keep some paper towels nearby. And then I will, if you saw the original drawing, I sort of scribbled on the roots and the tips of the hair. So that way when I am pulling with the water, like pulling the ink from the root towards the center and then the tips back up towards the center, there's the least amount of ink in the center. And then to make that highlight even more pronounced, if you can see, I'm taking like a, a paper, a dry paper towel and I'm stamping it onto the center area where I want it to be highlighted. And then I'm lifting and it will lift that section of ink away. And you can use the same thing when you're working with watercolors or inks. There we go. So I'm just stamping with my dry paper towel. And again, and it lifts in and it creates this highlighted. This is also the same approach I would use if I was using like Tombow markers 
or water color pencils it's the same technique kind of for all water soluble materials and in case you're new to mixed media there is a whole world of water soluble materials at your fingertips in the forms of crayons like neo color twos um, which are also extremely watercolor uh, water soluble crayons there's watercolor pencils watercolor markers that girl that you see off to the right was done with tombow markers which are another craft gate craft grade watercolor marker um, but they're super fun now a couple of things also to know about this product that i'm experimenting with today is that one they remain water soluble so you keep adding more water it's just going to keep blending and blending and blending so it does not become permanent like some um like the derwin ink tense pencils for example or ink tense blocks those after you activate them with water do become permanent and this little guy stays water soluble but see how jet black that is that literally is the same as the stibolo also i think that i just solved <laughs> for me anyways not like i just i'm some big hero but i solved my own puzzle of why the stibolo all black is just so black i think it's carbon and that would make a ton of sense because it looks identical and i've and i've swatched the stibolo all pencil against about 10 other water soluble blacks and it's always the blackest but it looks identical to this so super super fun discovery there so again if you just if you do too much or it's too scary you can always just lift that back with my paper towel as you see me working and i have to say i'm a little trepidatious when it comes to activating the rest on her face because i now know how powerful this is and so um if you're experimenting with this especially if you're doing a face as you can see i'm just using the existing and i'm glad i started with her hair because i've already activated so much so many of the lines there isn't as much available to activate so when i go to the face it's not as scary so definitely if you're doing a project like this and you want to experiment too do the hair first activate all the lines like as much as you can and then just take the leftover ink and smear it to produce the shading into the face and it will be much much less scary for you i have a lot of tutorials both on this my mixed media channel as well as my drawing channel on how to draw three quarter portraits this is very much my fun fab style that you're watching me uh render in here but i also have a book called um, i have a book series called how to draw fun fab faces and in volume two which is how to draw more fun fab faces i teach you how to draw profiles and three-quarter portraits in this very some people call it cartoony i just call it fun path <laughs> it's a great segue to learning how to draw realistic portraits believe it or not i know it is cartoony but the proportions are almost exactly the same so it's just a lot less intimidating if you're new at drawing faces it's so much less intimidating to draw something that's more cartoony right it's less serious it's less intimidating but actually practicing in a looser fun fab style it's still a great runway um, and practice uh, techniques to get your feet wet and just get comfortable with drawing faces and then when you learn the proportions and you start drawing realistic faces you're like oh hey I got this I know what I'm doing this is very familiar to my fun fab friends that I've been drawing this whole time so I hope that those uh, beginner book resources are helpful if you're scared to draw face and you really want to give a project like this a go um, I will also mention that these little magical carbon carbon uh art graph taylor's chalk chunks are actually this is actually um it's erasable as well not completely um but you can take an eraser which i thought was fascinating um, i think it must have enough graphite in it that you are allowed to um you can actually pick some up with a, a, a eraser a little bit it was um it was super interesting um but obviously when you've already activated it with water i don't believe that the um i don't believe uh it will erase whatsoever so it's not it's not fully erasable like a graphite would be but you can get a little bit of lift when it is dry which i just thought was super interesting now if you want to um oh and this was the other way of applying it like i was mentioning before which is actually just wetting it uh directly with a brush 
So I'm glad uh, you could get a little demo there. You could see that in action. Um, again, I think I mentioned I'm working in my Strathmore watercolor journal, which is filled with, well, I love it because it's a hard, it's a hardbound book, which is super nice. So it's great for travel. Um, but it's also nice because the pages are filled with 140 pound, really nice, thick, cold press watercolor paper. So you can do literally any mixed media application you want to in this art journal. You can really like take anything you have going with it. Um, the watercolor brushes I'm using are by Polina Bright. I actually have an awesome little affiliate link and a coupon that you'll find for 10% off your order in the description box below. And I'll, I'll list all of the um, supplies in the description box below for you as well. But these are, once I was introduced, oh look at there's a little murder cat who's arting with me today. <laughs> Dippy's in a ton of my YouTube videos, she's trouble. Um, but as you can see, I'm using the wash variation to um, add a little bit more um, darkness to the roots and tips again. This helps accentuate the white highlight portion, but it also um, makes it a little bit more realistic. Not obviously that I'm going for realism, but it really just accentuates the depths. The more, the more variations of uh, of gray and shades of gray that you can take from the from the value scale the more depth and dimension your anything you're drawing will have whether it's a cartoon or not a cartoon um, so it's always fun to go in and make sure you have sort of everything from black to white and as many shades of gray as you can in between will only add to the depth of your drawing so it was super easy using this i really think that these are so much fun <laughs> I have to say, I would say if you're on the fence of try wood, go ahead and try, especially if you love this dual wall. It's just neat. It's just fun. And, and you can't really um, paint with a Stabilo wall pencil the way that you can because of the way that this little, um, little, you know, pad is um, that you can just swipe your brush on it super easily. And in fact, I would go so far as to say if you wanted to, this would be a great to use with the Stabilo wall and because you can sharpen your Stabilo all pencil with a pencil sharpener and get really fine lines, then you can use this and keep it in like the kind of the painty form, like I'm using it right now to um, to add the larger swaths of plaque that you would to your, your mixed media projects. That would be really, really fun. Um, another thing I like to do with when I'm working with water soluble materials is definitely go back and do more than one layer. So the first layer, um, you can start off a little slowly and so it's not quite as scary. And then you let it all dry. And then when you go in to do your second coat, even though the first layer will activate a little bit, um, if you've activated it most all the way to begin with, it's really not gonna, it's not really gonna activate too much further because you've already kind of done it. So you can carefully go and add the second and or third layer kind of on top. So you can see, um, I was just adding a little bit more to the farther regions of her face um and you know what i just remembered i also have um i actually have a free pdf of the proportions of the three-quarter portrait i actually just forgot so if you actually want that pdf just let me know in the comments and i can drop you the link I totally forgot what i was talking about the books all right so now we are going to get to the fun which is the mixed media part so just adding some color and i want to actually tie the left side in with the right side um, to kind of so that when you're opening the book this is so fun to do with art journal this is the whole fun of art journaling is that you're creating this sort of book masterpiece pieces so tie, so kind of doing the two pages together so I have these really fun chunky paint pens um, and they're so ridiculously fun so they're filled with some lovely fluid acrylic ink on the inside it's just another fun way to apply your paints you could obviously just use a paintbrush and any any thinned down acrylic or inks you can use for this but i love it i always feel like a graffiti artist so like i'm like banksifying my <laughs> being a little banksy like um with these big fat chunky it almost looks like graffiti so i bought these a while ago these are just like super fun fluorescent colors 
And so I'm just um, just having fun uh, with a page. So I will just put some music on and you can enjoy uh, watching the process finish. If you have any questions, just pop them below in the comment section. And again, if you want links, everything is linked below. And um, yeah, enjoy the culmination of this super fun project. <laughs> 